What up, what up? It's the Fly Girl T Show. I'm your girl, Fly Girl T. This is. And I am Raf, the sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> Raf Flores Media. Medium. This is our first episode of 2019, I'm, I'm assuming. Oh my gosh, yeah. yes. So this is a new rebrand, <laughs> the second rebrand after, you know, after a few. <laughs> Welcome back, yo. Welcome to the new year. <laughs> Happy New Year, guys, in, um, in April. It's not too late. <laughs> in May. <laughs> We're like nearly halfway. Happy Easter, bro. Happy Easter. <laughs> We're like, you know, hey. you know, it's the fifth month of the year. The fifth month of the year. And the next month is going to be halfway through. You're freaking me out. <laughs> How fast is this year Time's going? ticking, bro. Oh, my God. Next minute. Oh um, yes, but a lot has been happening. The year has flown by. Um, hello, Avengers and Game of Thrones in Ooh. one week. This was an emotional week. Emotional week and, a, and the week for the nerds and the geeks out there just to uh, geek out and do their yeah. thing. Yeah, look, I'm not going to – no spoiler alerts, don't worry, so you can still watch. Um, but, like, let's just talk about – Avengers for a second, okay. Avengers Endgame. I've been waiting for this forever. I want to know what goes on after Thanos. But mm. <laughs> like <laughs> um but um okay. So there is I've seen threads and there's like some people that are like, oh, um what's the minimum we can watch before we watch Endgame? I'd say at least Infinity War. That's it. Yeah, I think that that's it. Minimum. You said no minimum, way. bare minimum. Yeah. I don't think you would understand going into this movie. I don't. You, I think you'll still enjoy it, but you wouldn't understand. You the whole really concept. like like everyone kind of comes together. There's so much backstory yeah. reference. It doesn't mean anything if you don't know anyone. Yeah, but a minimum, Infinity War at least, so you understand Thanos and why he's there. Because Thanos is not a too much of a big present. This whole movie. Um, I'm not spoiling anything, but like, yeah, yeah. it's more a focus on the Avengers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, while the f- previous movie is more focused on Thanos and yeah. that was his movie. So I, if you, I still these reckon two, these two are the, look, that's the saga. There's like 20 movies 22, yeah. in the making mm. of happening over a decade. And like, you might want to have a marathon. <laughs> like definitely you'll appreciate particular moments of the film. If you've seen the whole 22 movies. Yeah, like, okay, come on. You really have to... Thor. Thor is a given and he's like the funnest as well. Mm. Um, Thor and... and To be real, he he started being fun after the the third movie. Yeah, yeah, Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, The New Zealand guy. (laughs) 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 Um, So, Thor, definitely, um, I reckon... Oh, you still have to know Captain America and Iron Man. Oh, but if you understand, if you've seen Infinity War, you kind of understand their dynamic. Or um, there's particular things, but um, yeah, I think you should watch just just watch the just whole watch thing. All of <laughs> just it. watch all of it. It's only like it's there's not no like shortcuts. It's, it's man. not like you're watching Game of Thrones and watching eight season, seven seasons to catch up. You just watch 22, 21 movies. This yeah, twenty second. Look, I reckon uh, Ant Man. Like you don't have you don't have to see all of Ant Man. Okay. Let's see. Um, the movies that you don't have to watch would probably be the Ant Man series. Well, you'd need to know two. one at least no, no, one no, Ant Man. One Man, yeah. But then you see Ant Man in um, Civil War anyway, so you get the gist of him. Okay. But you don't have to see the Ant Man movies. You don't have to watch any of the old Spider Man Amazing series. Oh no, no. <laughs> they have nothing to don't do with this. Don't worry about Tobey Maguire. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> at least see the Captain America movies. Iron Man movies. Yes. All of the Avenger movies. Yes. And I think that's pretty much it. No, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, yeah. Well, I, no, I don't well, know. No. I like, I love, mm, yeah, yeah, I love yeah. Guardians. Yeah, I'll just watch the whole thing. And Strange, <laughs> Doctor Strange. Oh, you don't even have to watch Doctor Strange's really? movie. No, I'm just thinking back at this movie and... I yeah, guess. Yeah, I don't think you really need to get Doctor, Doctor Strange part. Anyway, you have to like catch up um, because, you know, like slow and steady wins the race. You should have watched it when we all watched it as they came out. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So now same question about Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay. Like, can you watch when uh, you can't skip? I think you have to watch it from the beginning. Mm. You can't just watch the last series because well, you'll be like, what the hell is going on? You, you've seen all of it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'm the complete opposite. I've only seen the first five episodes of the first season. I gave up on that. And then now it's the big thing. I'm watching the first few episodes of the eighth season. Oh, my God. In the middle, 
And, and, and how do you find on. it? Do you find it confusing? Oh, I've, I've watched a recap. Just go on YouTube, watch like an 11-minute recap of the whole Game thing. Game of Thrones. Of Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get the main points and main gist of each character. So, so oh yeah, my boyfriend he like he just watched the last one. Yeah, I mean, like, what do you mean that the last was his one? first, the last episode, the last episode, which was the massive fighting scene. I think a lot of people who haven't seen Game of Thrones actually attempted to watch the last episode. Yeah, I mean, but the, that's the, the, like the third episode of the you season. can't. It doesn't make sense. It's, they just want to see people die. Uh, Even though they're not invested, they just want to see people But it's people boring. Die. Like, you need to know why, like, the epicness is epic from the backstories. You know, same mm. as Avengers, same as Game of Thrones. Mm. Like, you, you got to, like, you know, the long game, bro. Yeah, you got to pick your battles. Sometimes, some people are not you know, Game of Thrones people. Some people are not Avengers people. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just, I'm I'm just watching it because it's the last season. There's only six episodes. You right? know what? I never thought I never because I don't like gory stuff, right? Mm. I never thought that I would like something like Game of Thrones. But I think I was just like flicking through. One day I had Foxtel, like I don't anymore. But um, um, I was flicking through and I was like, oh, what's this? And I was just like, oh, okay, I'll watch it. And I was like, eh. And I was like, whoa. And then every episode was like, there was like a whoa. And so, <laughs> but it was realistic. Like it was like, there was real stories with, with the people and the characters. Yeah. It wasn't like, and then it was like a little bit of like s- supernatural here and there, but nothing major um, mm. until like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. I just don't want to give anything away. But um, who would you say your favorite character is? Game of Thrones. Yeah. I don't know the names really. Um, <laughs> because all this time I thought Khaleesi was Khaleesi, but her real name's like Daenerys or something like that. Oh, yeah, no, Khaleesi, doesn't that mean queen or something? I don't know. I just thought she was Khaleesi all this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like the title. Her title is Khaleesi. Okay. Um, it's like the warrior queen or something. She seems a bit, she seems to be a favorite besides the, yeah, sa- she's um, the Starks. Mm. The Starks are not. Are they? I don't know. Oh, wait, no, no. no <laughs> are they like the main characters? I got confused. Starks, yeah. Starks are You're the- talking about the Lannisters. Yeah, yeah. Lannisters and so, Lannisters. I'm like full, like, I don't know anyone's name. And I'm just throwing these names out there. This but- <laughs> guy, secret lover. <laughs> I've only seen the first three God. episodes of the this season. Actually, two episodes. I've only seen two episodes of season eight. I missed out on um, the third episode, which is the main war scene oh but yeah, yeah, yeah. um my wife lovely. filled me in on it so i really is that don't have enough? to watch <laughs> no, it's really? not but apparently yeah. my wife filled me in so i don't was, have to watch it uh, I've, so, I've seen that the actual scenes the the filming of the yeah. war was pretty dark as in like you can't really see much well was that was that an issue for you because it was like physically dark no because i have an imagination that can fill in the blanks okay so it's like reading <laughs> so it's like li- listening to an audiobook no but like um i think it also depends on your tv some people have dark tvs but yeah mm. there's a lot of it that's um that there's like smoke and stuff and, you, and you're like i want to see i want to see but then, then that kind of adds to the suspense mm. you know um but yeah, no, I can, I could see a lot, and I'm night blind, so I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like, Probably, yeah, like, didn't you? Don't you have like a expensive TV? No. So all the rich people could watch the um, episode. No, while I went to watch us to poor my people. No, no, I'm <laughs> saying I went to my brother's house. He's got oh, yeah. like a like cheaper TV. <laughs> so oh yeah. We all watched on that, and I could see. Um, but yeah, I do know what you mean. The vision was um obstructed a little bit, but. Th- it didn't take away from the experience. No, so. it didn't take it, no. anything away. It added to the suspense. You so. kind of like wanted to know, like, what's happening? Oh, oh my God. Ah, no. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> such a roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> but um, it's just, you know what I love about Game of Thrones? It's so unexpected. They give you curveballs, like, all the time. You're like, what? What? <laughs> yes, that's my reaction. Yeah. We realize we're two completely different people. <laughs> We never agree. On we never anything. agree on anything <laughs> except like, sunny side eggs. Yeah, yeah, sunny yeah. Sunny side yeah, yeah, up yeah. eggs. <laughs> yeah. We don't agree on anything else. <laughs> so I don't that's know why how we're friends, bro. I don't, I don't know why we're doing this show. <laughs> so, I, love, I think the dynamic works. Yeah. Um, what else do we have on the docket? Um. Oh yeah. So. Ooh, okay. So Nipsey Hussle. I've been wanting to you know, um, talk about this for a while, but this is the first time we're getting together this year. Um. So Nipsey Hussle. There's so much. Um. So much going on, so many, I guess his dream was to leave a legacy behind and he's definitely achieved that. Um, Everyone's recognized him worldwide as like uh, an amazing human being who gave back to his community, Mm. even to the point where 
crayons are being named after him. You know Crayola, the crayon? Yeah. So um, they had a competition to find a new blue. Um, and then I think they listened to people who had written into them. And now they've named their blue Nipsey Blue. How oh, that's cool. cool. Is that? I wish, all right, which color would you want? Oh, obviously pink, yeah. named after you. Pink right. or turquoise? Those T-pink. are my two. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, but yeah, I just think that's amazing that you can impact the world so much and bring communities together. Sydney had a, a gathering at Hyde Park mm. um, and, you know, we did a balloon release. Um, shout out to the guys who organised it. Yeah, shout, mm. out to, um, shout out to Jordan um, and Amora. Amora um, I'm not going to say Shout out to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for bringing us together. That was beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I met some new people that I hadn't met before and, and it's really cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I hope, I don't know, I hope there are more people who take his leadership and, and bring communities together or give back and and lift each other up. Um, yeah, that's the only way to actually live his legacy in like in a good light. If It's one thing to pay tribute to someone who's passed away, but not continuing their legacy yeah. would actually not benefit anyone any because like his message is pretty clear Mm. and in building communities and it's a shame that he had to die for his message to to, be recognized to recognize and you know hit a megaphone and reach the whole world because yeah he wasn't he wasn't a commercial star not yet but he was about to be he he was was on the circumference but the the fact that he was not commercially like famous or known for in a mainstream sense but his message blew up the, the way it did when he died shows how much he has um, built in the community, how much he has put in back into his own neighborhood that he grew up in yeah, and how much um, influence and, and um, how much he's shone a, sh- sh- shine a light on this pers- perspective of that hustle that he had. Yeah. He, Nipsey hustle for real. Like for real, he actually owns his masters, which is one of the rare few artists yes. who do. Well, and Chris Brown, and I, I reckon Chris Brown and Rihanna are still friends because now Rihanna owns her masters mm. too. But Chris Brown was the one. Um, I mean, how does that make them still friends? Because I well, Oh, you own masters? I own masters too? No, right, we're friends? just like, hey, I reckon he like side, side gave her the hint to be like, you know what, you really, really want to like... <laughs> oh no this is yeah because this is how chris brown talks <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no. but i reckon friend to friend he would have said you know do this do this as mm. he would have had guidance from someone he looked at i heard that like the the um the record labels were like how did he even know to ask for that um so he must have had you know either a very very good confidant who yeah. told him hey this is what you need or or he's just very very business savvy and masters are not cheap yeah. They're expensive. And so, um, so yeah, Nipsey, you know what's great about him? Because I was watching, you know how they released all those old footage and stuff? Mm. Um, I was watching one where he was like, he was like a teenager. He was like young. Um, and there was a journalist that was like, oh, what are you going to buy next um, with with your first um not Million winnings, but like royalties mm. or whatever. And he was expecting him to say, oh, you're going to buy chains and stuff. And then he answered this fully like um, very wise business um, minded answer. It was yeah. like, no, you know what? I'm, I don't really need that right now. Um, he's like, it would better because, you know, chains and jewelry, they're a liability. They're not an asset. I want to invest in an asset and then I can build um, – later on and then get liability so i hope it opens a lot of people my a lot of people's minds when they're researching on him to have that mindset because everyone's like oh fancy clothes cars but then they're broke so like follow yeah. follow what he did follow the gary v follow the business people and build your empire first yeah it's the right stage to do it now because because of the content creating world that we built now everyone mm. can be their own entrepreneur per se yeah so it's the right mindset to go for and it's good that um people are recognizing his words mm. unfortunately he had to die for him yeah and now his message is out there and people are getting more inspired i know a lot of entrepreneurs are st- starting up their businesses based on nipsey hustles Hustle. Yeah, and Good. it's crazy to see. 
Yeah, mm. because he's an innovator, like the first in the world to have a smart store. You mm. know, I want to buy a Crenshaw, but then am I like... What's a smart store? Is that... A- so smart store, so, okay. So he had a store that has um, like Crenshaw hoodies, T-shirts, all those designs. Every time you put your... Um, you buy one, right? Take it home or order it online. Um, you get your smartphone and then you put it over um, the design and then it comes to life with whatever video, music video it okay, was into. Okay, that's dope. How cool is that? Mm. And then so the the new release is also linked to new T-shirt designs. Um, yeah, so it incorporates, you know, all the technology that we're into as well. Yeah, which is... That's smart. Which is smart. <laughs> smart, smart business. Smart store. <laughs> easy, easy. Um, so, yes. Um, yeah, all, you know, thoughts and prayers to Lauren London, his family, yeah. um, people who knew him. Um, because, you know, we're only spectators. I don't really know him and it's affected me a lot. Um, mm. Let alone his avid fans from day one. Mm. Um, and let alone the people in his inner circle that knew him from face to face. Yeah. Um, and Stream his music. To pump up his music to yes, the max. Yes, yes. Let because the marathon like he, if continue. He owns his, if he owns his masters, then all that money that's going through the streams. Yeah, will go to his family. Will go back to his family. So that's the only, probably one of the minimal ways you could support. Yeah. And help support out. and yeah, let the marathon continue. Go online, um, and and go and order some of his stuff so you can see how the the smart um, designs work and stuff. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Big ups to Nipsey Hussle. We love you, man. Rest in peace. Yes, rest in peace. Um, Raph, did you know that um, Instagram and Facebook are taking away likes? Yep. Uh, Can you explain it? Can you elaborate on what's going on? So, okay. So, the rumor is that um, you know how we do likes and stuff like that and everyone wants to like – get that hit of like, yeah, someone likes me. <laughs> like, mm. um, They're taking it away. So that's the dopamine, I guess, getting taken away from people. I don't know okay. how they're going to feel about that. But I reckon it's because they want better content. They want something that's actually engaging. So everyone's in the same playing field, whether they're a big Coca-Cola company kind of thing or if they've got a smaller budget it, and it they're does, the average yeah. guy. It does level the playing field, as in everyone's back to square one. Yeah, and like, so what really mm. defines you is the the stuff that you're going to say or do or show. Um, so then you get real engagement as opposed to just Do likes. you think people will be using Instagram or Facebook more now that the likes have been taken away or less? I think they're going to be like the average people or people who don't really know how to do marketing. I think they're going to be the whingers because they don't have like that validation anymore. I think influencers will be less inclined to use them now. I think they'll be less because like companies are looking at influencers and choosing their influencers based on how many people follow them and how many likes they get per per gram. However, that doesn't – because you can have bots that just like – yeah, right? but still, so, they still look at it and they they probably just compare how many followers you have and how many likes you get and everything. They look at en- and the comments. engagement. Mm. So not just likes, they look at real engagement so they know that you're not just buying likes. So the only engagement is that you can get is, are they still keeping the views if uh, you're putting a video up? I don't know. Because there's got to be like a, a measurement of engagement besides the comments because there'll be comments that's probably the only engagement they'll figure out i think out. the comments is what they're going on i think the comments are better engagement than just likes and just mm. views um what if everyone just starts commenting like i think that would be sad <laughs> you get all these people saying oh like it probably be end, up, end up being a thing people will be like oh i can't like so i'll just comment no like. everyone will probably get gifts i always use gifs like I have oh, okay. to use the right gift for the right occasion. I usually use <laughs> gifts f- just to mock people. <laughs> it's, a, You're it's, mean. A, it's a roasting. It's a roasting tool. Roasting but I'm, s- I'm I'm keen to see how they'll go without the likes. No, and the, the followers will be hidden as well, right? Yes. So followers. Uh, I don't and know. Likes. Actually, I don't know if followers are hidden. I know that likes are uh, said to be hidden. I don't think it'll make a difference if if a, a company really knows what they're doing. Mm. I, I think, think it's good. I think it's a good way to go. Yeah. In terms of direction. Yeah. But I'm just trying to figure out where they're gonna gauge um, engagement. Like besides, um, besides looking at the analytics. 
and Enga- everything. Well, engagement will be because for businesses, at the end of the day, businesses actually want someone to purchase mm. to help their business with sales, right? Mm. Um, so that will speak for itself. Mm. Um, and then, what if there's a new start, a startup company that's starting a new business, mm. selling new kicks or something, right? Yeah. Um, they want to get started, but it doesn't feel like they're legit because they only have like. 10 followers and like they take time. Whereas if they didn't see that at all or didn't see how many people liked them, like people would chime in not based on a popularity contest, but based on, hey, I really like those shoes. Or, okay, so hey, I really the like-, like system is it? I, I, I got questions. Um, <laughs> the like system, does it, is the like system still there? The option to like a photo and the actual I, number of likes is hidden? From the public and only the user can see the likes? Yes, I think is that, so. That, is that the way to go? Yeah. Okay, cool. If that's the case, then I'm, 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 I'm all, all for that. I just want to try and measure the engagement that my, the post gets. I think, yeah, only the person who owns the account will be able to see the likes. Okay. Yeah. And then people are going to start screenshotting their likes and their engagements. <laughs> you know, like people want to show off. Yeah. They're going to find a way to... Sh- to flex their Instagram some way. Yeah, but you know what? Let's ask, um, let's speak to Reese, who is not only um, a record label owner, um, but he also teaches people how to do social media as well. Oh, nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Reese. We have Reese, aka Paisley Hart. In the building with us, he is a record label owner and also a social media guru. So especially because he's used to like doing it for all of his artists on his record labels. So if there's any artists out there or anyone who's like, hey, I need to get my social media game up, um, we'll tell you all about his social media course later. But in the meantime, I'm curious, how the hell do you even start a record label? How did you even get (laughs) into that? Well, it's actually like a really crazy story if you want to, do you want to hear the short or the long story? I want to hear the entertaining version. (laughs) The entertaining version is, I used to live a pretty purposeless life. Okay. You know, everyone goes through that phase in their life, what am I meant to do with my life, Mm -hmm. whatever. And I used to fucking love drugs. I still do like drugs, but I don't do a (laughs) certain array of drugs. And I had like, I quote unquote, un, uh, overdosed on mushrooms. You can't really overdose on mushrooms, oh, but really? I just took way too many and it poisoned me like intensely, oh right? Oh my God, yeah. And I, long story short, I had this like crazy awakening and it was like, if you choose now, it's like you can die now and if you want to live a purposeless life still, or yeah. you can choose to live in purpose and I'll give you a second chance. Whatever that Ooh. is, God, source, self, drugs, yeah. whatever it is, told me you have to make a choice. And I was like, fuck Man. that, I wanna, I wanna do something. Yeah. So the next few days, I, I, afterwards, I cried and cried and cried for hours. Yeah. Went to sleep, next day, couldn't walk or talk for a few days, that's how much I had. Wow. And then, as soon as I was good, I quit the job I was working at and I just like, Got into, I was like, signed up for the first music. It was like the only thing I was into, music. I was like, all right, music business. Yeah. I did that for like a month, started a blog. And then I was just like, okay, like I hated school. Why the fuck am I doing uni? But I just wanted to get in some direction. And then I started like writing a blog um, called Poetry Runs Deep for, I did that for like two years. What was it about? Was it like a Well, Poetry Runs Deep. It was just like going deeper into what the actual lyrics and the music of songs? Uh, of songs okay. was about like getting in depth because I really like the lyrics and, okay. and how the music makes you feel. So like, yeah. you know, how it runs deep into us outside of just yeah, yeah, yeah. like its surface level. Yeah. Um, started running monthly hip hop gigs. Oh, wow. And the person I was running monthly hip hop gigs uh, is an artist. He goes mm-hmm. by Viking N3, but at the time he was in a group called Smacktown. Oh. And they were signed to a record label that didn't really prioritize them. Mm. And before he was with that record label, he created his own record label just to release stuff on, never promoted it. And I was like, hey, your record label sucks. You have a record label. I want to run a record label. Let's take that 
and release your next release on this. And it was just like, from there, just like, cool, let's keep trying to figure this out, how to run a record label. Wow. Um, so, yeah, it was just all like blind fate, like just being like, okay, whatever purpose is, I'm going to go find it, you know? Mm. And just like, what am I into? I like music. Cool, let's just start doing this and uh, mm. write about it. Now, throw events, make a record label, you know? Yeah. It's been majority of my path. is just like, what am I into right now? Cool, I'm going to do it as big as I can. Awesome! So you follow your intuition, you follow your gut feeling in your heart, mm, yeah. and instead of what you should be doing, it's like what you want to do. Oh, 100%. Like, I only follow my desire. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about your social media because I think that's really exciting. Cool. Um, what, I guess, you had to do it for your artists, yeah? Yes. And then, so, now you, you teach other people and they're available, even if they're not on your label, to learn what you do for mm. the, your artists. Yes. Um, so, tell me how that came about. Okay. So, like, previous to pretty much this year, the label was mainly focused on my artist Viking N3. I, I hadn't signed all these other artists yet. And he is more underground, like of the ilk of Hobson, Tech Nine, uh, like RA the Rugged Man. These artists that never signed to rec like major labels don't mm. get radio play or anything like that. And we're like, how how do we reach everybody, you know? And how are these platforms like Team Backpack going viral? So we just started studying all these people and we're like, okay, cool, you do this, you do that, this caption, let's keep trying, trying, trying. And then some of the videos are getting hundreds of thousands of views. What, like the music, their music He's videos? like my artist, Viking N3. He's getting, we start getting these big things and then all these booking agents start booking us and mm. blogs start talking about us mm -hmm. because they know we're putting numbers down, right? Right. And, but we got no radio or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just, I was out for lunch at this place in um, Byron Bay called Paradise One. It's like this permaculture resort that's like, it's like a hippie fun land, you know? That's yeah. like yoga, meditation, oh, wow. vegan food, um, rivers, mud baths, all this going on, right? Yeah. Uh, a friend invited me there and a guy comes up to me. He's like, hey, you're Reese, right? Yep. And oh, you run Fight Music, you guys do those viral videos, yeah. And he's like, hey, uh, we put on boutique music festivals here. We do this, we do that. Oh. Um, would you be interested in helping us grow our page and whatnot? And I was like, oh, maybe. Like, I never really thought about it. And he's like, I'll pay you X amount a week. And I was like, I can do that. Like, <laughs> I'm currently working at Woolworths and I don't love that. So, yeah. let's, um, let's so do that. So did you get to quit Woolies? Not straight off the bat. So uh, that started... I think it was August 2015 was when I got my first client and then by January 2016 was when I quit. Okay, wow. Yeah, so six months of doing social media marketing for other people was when I was like, okay, you know, yeah. I, can, I can quit. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now what's your, the social media course, what's it called? <coughs> um, so I have a social media marketing course called Seven Steps to Being a Social Media Guru and Going Viral. Nice. So I created that because the more and more I worked with people, I was getting higher end clients that paid me more, but I'm known in the hip hop community and yeah. all these artists want to know how to go viral and how to better use this platform that's for everyone. Yeah. But it just wasn't aligned for me to to be charging these people a lot of money when I yeah. know they don't have it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So eventually I was like, okay, what if I create this course where I just give away all my information yeah. um, and they can use it in whatever way they can, you know? They, yeah. can, they can, whatever creative lane they can, because I know these bigger people, they could, they were, if they went through my course, they'd be like, cool, but I don't want to do it still, you know? So yeah. I know I'm not going to lose any clients. I actually get more by putting out bigger products. Yeah. Yes. Um, so what I love about you as a person yes. um, is that you're, you've got a lot of philosophy, spirituality, and you're not the typical, although you own a record label, hip hop record label, yes. you're not the typical like hip hop kind of dude. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I love um, in your social media course, I noticed that it's also linked to every module is um, linked to a certain chakra yes. in the body. So yes. you've got seven chakras, yeah? Yes. Um, and then can you tell me like how that relates to the social media aspect? Cool. Like, 
Um, so, you know, the reason why is because I, I did that is when I started getting more and more involved in the social media marketing, I was like, oh, like my job is to get people to get more likes and be more Instagram famous or whatever. Yeah. And I, I just felt like there was an integrity piece that was out of line for me, okay. though I was making money and whatnot. Social media is a bit of a gray area, you know, like yeah. it, it can bring out the areas of us that are a bit ugly sometimes whilst we look really great, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and I'm massively into spirituality. So I was mm. like, cool, I'm going to make this a spiritual platform for myself and give it a spiritual transmission. Um, so I sort of wean out the people that, because it's, it's people will look at it and be like, oh, gross, you know, like, but yeah. the people that have a higher integrity within themselves and into spirituality, they'll want to work with me. That'll become my demographic. So I can yeah. align with people that I know that uh, have the same integrity, purpose and transmission as myself. So, yeah. and the seven chakras. So for instance, how I start off the program, the first one starts off at the top, which is your crown. Um, chakra which is all about your purpose yeah and how it serves the world outside of just yourself yeah so the, the first thing is going in and be like why do you want to get big at social media like why do you need this platform mm. who does it serve outside of just yourself you know is it just helping your family is it giving information to people to grow their own business are you mm. making music that is cathartic to people when they're going through rough times or whatever so mm. I can teach people whenever you're doing a post to, to reconnect to purpose. Mm. So that lands in when when I read a post and I can tell it's superficial, it go it just it might be big or and that lands and it's like it just flops for me, you know. Right. Yeah. But if yeah. it's got a strong transmission of purpose and enriched and enlightening for me, I'm like yes, this resonates with me so hard. I know why it's going to go big. Yeah. So that's the first thing that I go through, and then you know. I'm not going to do all the chakras, but yeah, for yeah. instance, like solar plexus yeah. is sort of like your ego um, That's chakra. That's like in your stomach area, yeah? Yeah, it's all about the power. It's like your animalistic, yeah. like, go get it. I stand out from the crowd person. And one, I clean up everything about ego. People think ego is bad, but it's fucking amazing. Okay. Like the ego teaches you what you actually want and why you act funny when you're you know, it's like, I might be trying to get your attention, right? Mm. And, and I feel sad, but I don't get your attention. So I'm really out there. And I'm like, okay, what is it about her that really needs the attention? And I got to find that within myself, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. So there, I'm trying to teach people, like, if you're a singer, yeah. why do you stand out from every other singer that does a similar genre to you? What is it about you that stands out? And when you're on this platform, that when people are scrolling down their feed, they go, who is this person, you know? Yeah. Or when you're a, a business mentor, or a finance manager or whatever, what yeah. is different to you about anyone else and how do you represent that on social media? Yeah. So I go through all these different archetypes of ourselves. So you could call it chakras, you could call it archetypes, you could call it embodiments, whatever of yourself, these different characters is just, yeah. I just found these seven that uh, align and so resonate with myself and and demographic that I'm aiming for. That's really cool cuz then like you're not like every other person on social media. You're really like getting someone's uniqueness, mm. finding it's like deeper than just a social media course because yeah. it's also a journey in finding yourself and putting part of yourself on social media. Is 100%. That, yeah? 100%. And like I will never I like I I don't I wouldn't say I compromise. I can adjust to who my audience is, but like I've done corporate workshops and I mm. have tattoos on my head, hands, I come in barefoot like and I'll swear I'll be my full self and I'll try and give that transmission to a corporate business that seem a bit rigid and, and yeah. when I see their posts I'm like I'd rather watch you know paint dry because you're so corporate and the people yeah. that you're trying to connect with aren't into that, you know? So yeah. if you can accept me as I come in, then you're going to be able to transform your own posts because That's they're really going to get cool. more character. Yeah. Um, so if anyone wants to do the social media course, where can they check it out? And yeah. Okay, cool. So check out my social medias. At the moment, I'm getting a website built, which should be up early January, which will be hellopaisleyheart.com. Paisley Heart, Paisley if you Heart, don't know how that's to spell. Me. Um, but if not, for now, the link's in my bio on Instagram, at paisleyheart underscore. On my Facebook, Reese Paisley Heart Satchel. 
Uh, and if not, just type in the seven steps to being a social media guru and going viral and it should come up on the interwebs. Excellent. And do we have, if anyone from the Fly Girl T-Show listens, do we? Do you have that special code or is there something that we can arrange for our listeners that want to... We'll put a Fly Girl T. Just if you type in Fly Girl T onto my um, website on the link on there, we'll get a 10% discount. There you go, because I know everyone wants to do social media. <laughs> yes, everyone needs to know. It's a platform. This is what I, this is the biggest thing is right now for independent businesses like ourselves, mm -hmm. like everyone that's interviewed by you, mm -hmm. we're all independent. We don't have the major backing. Yeah. We don't have the money to go on TV, on whatever. This is the golden era of of marketing for ourselves because we have the whole power in our hands. We don't need to yeah. put it in a magazine. We don't need to be on a Jetstar um, like radio as you're flying. You don't need to be on TV mm. and spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm doing posts of people, I spend 200 bucks and we're getting a $100,000 turnover for certain businesses, you know, wow. like just off 200 bucks. Yeah. Right? So, you know, obviously that's, you have to have the product that can create that. But even from artists, you know, I've got their videos for a hundred bucks to get, you know, near a hundred thousand views on YouTube yeah. or on Facebook or whatever. And at so much cheaper than any other platform that yeah. I know than just investing in yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but what's your, I guess, um, I want to leave um, the audience with some part of your philosophy that you follow. Um, Cause people think, oh, social media is free. I know how to use that, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But um, I'm, I'm challenging everyone to take it on another level, especially if you're an artist, especially if you're, uh, you want to be a personality or some mm -hmm. kind of have this as a living. Yeah. Um, what kind of philosophy or mindset would you impart with our audience? Mostly like really listen to yourself, like all this noise out here, the stuff that conditions you to be a certain way as whatever artist you want to be, whatever business you want to create and how it's meant to be, fuck all that shit. Look at what you're really into and make that your business. Like you said, I'm not the most conventional uh, hip hop record label owner. I'm not the most conventional social media marketing person, but that's why people work with me is mm. because they're like, whatever he's doing is working in whatever the fucking way he wants. I want that, you know? Mm. So, and when you do that, if you're an artist, you're gonna inspire that within your fans. You're gonna inspire that within your family. Like, there's so much conditioning that we have from all around the world in our media, to our own parents, to our religion, to anything that doesn't allow you to be you. But if you are so good at being yourself, no one can question it. Mm -hmm. And then they're inspired to do it to themselves, you know? Like even your own parents, your own, whoever it is that, that has raised you and think you have to be a certain way, you can change that mind frame, but just by being solid within yourself and really owning it. Nice. Thank you so much, Reese. Make sure you check out the links. We'll put them in the comment, um, the description below. Um, and if you ever want to, um, once 2019, your website, website hellopaisleyheart.com will be up so you can check out everything on there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so Thank you. much. <laughs> Thank you for your wisdom and everything. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Reese. Um, that's right. We'll leave the, um, if you want to do the social media course, um, you can get 10% off. Just put in the code FLYGOLT um, and we'll leave a description on link below. Beautiful. And uh, also with Let's Talk About It, which is at the start of the show, we are now doing feedback so if you have any voicemails and comments or any questions we'll read them out and share them on the next episode leave us a voice voice note it's like like the new answering machine yeah let's do it, do <laughs> I it. can't wait to hear you guys <laughs> i want to hear you guys talk to us yeah no swearing please <laughs> now you can swear we'll just beep it out oh, okay okay <laughs> now we've got editing this is podcast <laughs> so where can they find us um on facebook.com slash DJ Instagram slash FlyGirlT and where else? And that's pretty much it. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and you, YouTube. <laughs> you can find me at um, rafflores.com and you can just look forward to the next episode because we're going to be more consistent and more current. This is a new, this is a new brand for us. Yeah. A consistent. New, a new page. Yeah. A new year. A new year after five months. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll see you soon. Peace out. <laughs>